Ah, uh, fan games. You know, you normally don't see these types of love-filled homebrews when a company faithfully produces spin-offs and sequels to your favorite gaming titles, but we all know that doesn't necessarily happen with every gaming franchise. Take Mother for example. Considering Nintendo hasn't done diddly squat with this cult classic franchise since 2006, sometimes we as fans have to take things into our own hands and expand the lore and universe forward. Not all fan games are perfect and if I were being honest, some of them aren't even good. But I thought I'd take some time in this video to explore some of the most popular, strange, or unique Mother fan games and hacks in existence. Because believe me, there, there are a lot of them. From Mother 1 to 3, the series has fan games of all shapes and sizes, with some even passable for real standalone titles. Today I'm exploring 10 or so of these games, and of course I will leave a link to each in the comments below so you can download them, which you should probably smash that like button for. Because, you know, I, I'm doing the Lord's work here. And before we get ahead of ourselves, I won't be talking about Undertale or Deltarune because it's not a freaking mother fan game. Probably the best place to start off in this video would be with the only decent version of a Mother 1 fan game I could find. The Mother 25th Anniversary Edition was a rebuild of sorts and, in my opinion, is the definitive way to play the original Mother title. The overall game has very little changes from the original, but many of the areas are easier to navigate, some dialogue is refined, and perhaps coolest of all is that all the sprites were completely redrawn to get them to more accurately model the clay versions originally marketed with Mother 1. The most appealing part of this fan game is that it makes the original Mother way more enjoyable. Personally, I didn't really care for the combat as much in Mother because of how annoying the encounter rate could be. The team of the 25th Anniversary Edition enhanced this as well as some of the experience points and money obtained during your victories. The only drawback is this isn't really a plug and play ROM file, but more of a patch. So that being said, you'll need a copy of Earthbound Beginnings or Earthbound Zero to properly utilize the patch. Either way, this is definitely worth downloading and installing to unlock the premier mother experience. Along the same lines of the Mother 25th Anniversary Edition comes the ultimate version of Earthbound that fans tirelessly optimize for the greater good. You may remember me mentioning in previous videos that a huge amount of things were changed in the localization of Earthbound. Everything from dialogue, to sprites, to character and location names were altered from the original Japanese version for a wide variety of reasons. Honestly, I'm surprised they chose to clothe Ness instead of fix the nightmare fuel that was the Gigas fight, but I'm kinda happy that they ended up doing it the way they did. In Maternal Bound and its derivatives, the countless changes from the original translation are rectified, leaving the gamer with the purest possible Earthbound experience in English. Still not convinced? Then head on over to Starmen.net's forums and you can get a full synopsis of all the hacks and changes in the quintessential Maternal Bound Omega version. And yeah, there's quite a bit here. Not only that, but we finally get a run button. That is definitely worth the download on its own. So let's totally shift gears to one of the most unique Earthbound hacks in existence. Quest of Hat. This follows Mr. Saturn and Jeff in a post-Earthbound mini-arc where you have an awesome hat, and there are plenty of shenanigans to be had. I mean, who doesn't love Mr. Saturn? The best part of this hack is that it's honestly one of the best put together in existence, and it's also so much different than a standard Earthbound hack. It's a completely different take on the Mother Universe, and although it's not terribly long, it's certainly cheeky in its own right. If you're looking for more puzzle-oriented themes than the original Earthbound, this is worth a look. Just a plain, fun game. So, what happens when a fan is so enthusiastic that they want to make an entirely new game with the original aesthetics from Earthbound? Well, that's where you get Earthbound Omega. Starman.net forum user The Jurassic Fox was so enamored with Earthbound that he wanted to make a similar game, only making the game about his own life. Earthbound Omega is a short, creative fan game that follows the quest of Rob, Noah, Jenny, and Artis as they look to right the world after a commotion is caused by an angry dog. Yes, you heard that right, an angry dog. No, don't ask me what kind of dog it was, I don't know. Although Earthbound Omega might be pretty basic overall, I appreciate the ambition and the passion the creator had behind the game. I can't remember if it was made an RPG maker or something else, but the overworld and combat animations are a unique combination of Mother 2 and 3, and the soundtrack's actually decent as well. Although short, there is a good bit of fun to be had here, so I recommend downloading this one as well.
All right, I I'm not gonna lie. This one is actually kind of weird. If you're a diehard shmup fan like me, you've undoubtedly heard of the incessantly punishing series Toho. I mean, I've been playing bullet hell games for many years, but there is something to be said for how absolutely relentless Toho's bosses can be. Of course, when Japan gets involved, there are certainly some weird outcomes. Toho Mother and the sequel, Return of Toho Mother, are some of the most in-depth fan games in existence. However, it's not really Mother-centric, but more so Toho canon featuring characters from the Mother series. The synopsis alone is pretty strange. It's an ordinary day in Gensokyo, which is to say that everyone's bored. Reimu and Marisa head out to visit Yuka, and while dealing with the fairy problem, they hear a loud crash. Nearby, they find a meteorite, an alien, and a certain boy who's wandered into their world. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, in this one, you control some of the various characters from the Toho franchise as they navigate through an interesting story to help uncover what the heck is going on in their world. And perhaps best of all, the antagonist Porky is a central villain in all these games. Basically, this is the hack that nobody asked for, except for maybe if you're from Japan, but it's surprisingly really good. It's really well put together and created. I'd recommend it if you're not necessarily looking to expound upon any mother-related lore, but you just want something fully fleshed out and different. Both Toho Mother and its sequel offer many hours of playtime between them. One of the most famous examples in the Mother fandom comes from no other than Mother Cognitive Dissonance. This fan game was made entirely within RPG Maker and is, in my humble opinion, the best fully created Mother fan game in all of existence. It seeks to fill the gap between Mother and Earthbound, and it had some of the similar thought-provoking dialogue gamers experienced in the other games. Cognitive Dissonance tells a story of Geek's descent into madness and the wandering band of aliens who once protected the Apple of Enlightenment and how they're dealing with the situation. Because somebody's probably going to look it up, I'll just save the trouble. Cognitive dissonance is, by definition, an uncomfortable feeling caused by holding two conflicting ideas simultaneously. Basically, if somebody has an opinion that rivals your own and you don't really know how to pick between the two of them, it causes this cognitive problem in your brain. And I will say that Alinovar and the rest of the Apple Chasers kind of model this definition of cognitive dissonance with the task that they have in front of them. Similar to Quest of Hat, Cognitive Dissonance is so unique that it spawns an intrigue unlike any of the other games on this list. But perhaps most of all is that I actually really enjoyed the story of this title. Unlike Quest of Hat, this fan game really amps it up by bringing in a plausible mini arc linking the first two titles together. I also enjoyed that it's told in an episodic form, offering an experience somewhat similar to Mother 3. I can't talk too much about the game without bloviating about spoilers, so I will leave a link to Nitro Rad's video on the game as it wraps up the whole experience nicely. Do you like Earthbound? Have you ever wanted to play Earthbound through the eyes of a female? Well, if you answered yes to both of these questions, you might be like three people in the entire world, but Earthbound the Rat Race is the game for you. Honestly, I didn't even know about this one until I started doing some research for this video, and on the surface it appears to be the exact same game, just with Paula swapped with Ness. Uh, very subtle differences here. Some others include Picky and Pokey becoming Mickey and Mikey, and let's just say they look a bit different. But the creator of this game actually removed a lot of the adult elements that made Earthbound challenge its interesting K to A rating. But why? It's got a really cool backstory as the creator originally intended for the game to be for one of his younger female relatives. Though as things went on, it spiraled into so much more than that. You might think, why put so much work into something that accomplishes so little? And to be frank, that was my initial impression as well. But the more that I played it, I began to appreciate the subtleties that existed. I didn't make it that far, but I've been assured that the author made their fair share of twists and turns along the way. So if you're looking for an interesting twist on a classic game, this is for you. So what happens when you take Earthbound and Pokemon, two of my favorite games of all time, and mash them together? Well, I present to you Earthbound Capsule Quest. This short title, around four hours in total, allows the player to battle with enemies from Earthbound and capture them around the few towns within the story. It combines RPG Maker XP and the Pokemon Essentials engines to create an interesting experience that I played through in one sitting. 
Capsule Quest relies pretty heavily on Pokemon, as the elemental typing and attacks of the various Earthbound creatures draw directly from Pokemon themselves. For example, the Vibranium enemy is Steel-type, and the Territorial Oaks are Grass-types that use Leech Seed and Razor Leaf. Despite how gimmicky or short the game may be, it's certainly worth a look, and is very well made. Cool, finally an actual Mother 3 hack! Uh, kind of. This fan game, created by Spider Freak 1011 is similar to Earthbound the Rat Race without removing the adult elements. Essentially in this game, Lucas and Klaus have swapped roles, which changes quite a bit of the story considering their starkly different personalities. However, much of the game remains unchanged aside from some changes to Klaus and Kumatora's PSI abilities and a couple of other things. I didn't make it extremely far into this game either, but there isn't much else to really be said here. The one thing going for it is this ROM hack is still quite new, as it was only released in 2019, so I'd expect the author will do some more edits over time to polish the differences a bit more, as is evident from this post over at VG Resource Forums. Though, at least as it stands now, I'd say this one is skippable even for a Mother 3 fan. The last game I want to talk about here is the infamous Toby Fox special, The Earthbound Halloween Hack. And honestly, I didn't know why it was called that until I made this video. Um, it was finished in 2008 for Saruman.net's Halloween Fun Fest, which kind of gives a prelude to its name. This hack of Earthbound is a parallel timeline of events transpiring in the universe if Ness and the others did not return home after battling Gygus. And let's just say, things are vastly different. You start the game as a vagrant bounty hunter named Varric, or Varik, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, waking up inside Ness's own home and eloping on a long and twisted story that Toby Fox went later on to call a bad hack with swears. Well, I mean he's not wrong. Uh, the game is definitely vulgar. Uh, some of the dialogue, especially in the infamous battle with Dr. Andonuts at the end, um, is just, uh, it, I mean, it's kind of cringy how how vulgar and, and it, yeah, you just have to play it for yourself. Some of the dialogue, sprites, and themes are downright disgusting, but this doesn't mean that the game is bad, per se. It's a unique and creative take on Earthbound's lore, and offered much of Fox's inspiration for Undertale and Deltarune, most notably during the final boss fight against Andonuts. Coming back to play this hack almost looks like you're playing a piece of gaming history, and is part of why I really like it so much. If you're a fan of the Mother series, or have played Undertale and you're looking for more Toby Fox related stuff, I recommend giving this one a go. Alright everyone, I'd like to thank you for watching- WAIT! Hold on. Did we miss something here? Oh yeah! Mother 4! The most popular Mother fan game that we never got! Well, I know I've mentioned things about it in a previous video, and luckily for you, I am doing an entire video on its history. So yeah, you'll have to stay tuned for that one, Mother fans. So obviously there are tons more Mother or Earthbound related fan games out there, and I'd love to hear about some of your favorites in the comments below. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, smashing that like button, and enabling the bell for notifications so the Mega Man Caves videos can jump to the top of your list. As always guys, I'll catch you next time.